What's up guys, Dr. Mo here, Digital Nomad Physician at digitalnomadphysician.com. You can email me, drmo at digitalnomadphysician.com. I'm in this beautiful, beautiful Airbnb in the desert. It's um, uh, 29 Palms, which is right next to Joshua Tree. And my girlfriend's sister owns this place. She bought it mostly as an investment, very cool. Um, she's great at decorating, the, the place is amazing. Is this big bench. Not a bench, it's like this low platform thing that you can like just lay on and lounge on and then like the countertop is up here. So you can see it's pretty low to the ground. It's very, very well designed. It has this like um, Iranian theme to it and like a bunch of instruments. Very cool, very, very chill. You can even hear the background, it's very quiet. All, all you hear is the hum of the, um, uh, the refrigerator. Anyway, so my name is Mohammed Ashori, MD. I'm a board certified family medicine physician practicing in Los Angeles, working remotely in Spain, you know, trying to live all over the place, be location independent, uh, enjoy my free time, but I also enjoy the clinical medicine, just kind of figuring things out. And th I thought I would record one more thing about medical board investigations, maybe not relevant to you, but if you're a physician, trying to do something, anything out on your own, or if you're a physician who is maybe <laughs> uh, a bit unconventional, it is important to understand how the medical board works, uh, state medical board. And so it's going to be a very brief overview and then maybe a couple of examples of how some people get into trouble with state medical boards, especially the people who come to me uh, asking me for my advice and help them through their issues. And I'll tell you how that works with me. <clears throat> So the state medical board gives you your license, right? You're a physician. Yes, you went to medical school. Yes, you went to residency. Yes, you did your fellowship. That means nothing, right? So American Board of Medical Specialties, ABMS, which could be American Board of Rheumatology, American Board of Pediatrics, American Board of, board of Family Medicine, American Board of Internal Medicine, ABIM, they're all subsidiaries of the ABMS, American Board of Medical Specialties. They might put you through a ringer and give you a bunch of tests and say, we accept you as a board certified family medicine physician. You still need an active state medical license to be considered that. So you need to get a state license first. So all your training and all this stuff means nothing in the United States if you're gonna practice medicine. A state, one state somewhere has to still give you, grant you a state medical license. If you've had multiple felonies, you. I don't know, had pedof some pedophile thing going on, if you had spousal abuse, major, major stuff, you may never get a license, right? If you had a criminal, major criminal record, you may never get a state medical license. No state in the United States may grant you a license. Now, you could hire an attorney and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and maybe somebody might give you a provisional license, uh, might give you uh, a license where you are under, uh, in perpetuity, you're under probation. Those things can happen, but for the most part, it would be very difficult. Now, let's say you get a state medical license like I did. <clears throat> that is considered a privilege. The, the license is a privilege. The state says we find you worthy of receiving this license. Now, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm saying this because this is written in detail everywhere on their website. And once you deal with the state medical boards like I do, and my consulting clients, physician consulting clients do, this is what comes up quite a lot. Like you go to the state medical board hearing, you go in front of the administrative judge, you get called before the state medical board because of a patient complaint, a malpractice suit, some sort of unprofessional conduct. They're going to say, hey, 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 Dr. Rishori, calm the fuck down. We are giving you this license because, because we can, because we want to, like not because we have to. And you should consider a privilege that you're a physician for us. Now, I say this with a bit of snark because most of us as physicians are like, uh, I know, like I'm, a, like I'm a physician, that's why I went to all the school. Like nobody told me that it was gonna be provisional and I may not get a license. So this is something to consider, right? Um, and a lot of things are that way, but maybe as physicians, we don't really think that. Like you can have a, you can start a restaurant, but you may not get a license to serve uh, alcoholic beverages. You may not even get a license to serve the food. The city might say, no, we're not gonna <clears throat> give it to you, not in this location at least, or we won't give it to you because of prior, I don't know, wrongdoings or whatever, whatever the reason might be. So um, this is important. That's, that's probably the most important thing to understand. Once the state gives you state, once the state 
gives you a state medical license, you have that license to practice medicine in that state. They have oversight. You, are, you fall under the medical practice, so not you fall. The Medical Practice Act dictates what the patient-doctor relationship is, what you can do, what you can't do. Your particular state is going to have very particular requirements. For example, some states will say you cannot say a single negative thing about a certain medical condition that is treated with a certain preventative thing. I want to say it. I don't know. You know what I mean. So you can't badmouth some part of medicine, but you also maybe can't do certain things. Like you may not be allowed to do PRP. You may not be able to do stem cell, stem cell injections. You may not, certain things, some states are, they don't like it. Medical marijuana and other stuff might fall into that. So, but otherwise, as a physician, they will leave you alone. They're like, dude, practice your medicine. We want you to see our patients. Please help us see your patients. See these patients and just do good by them. Until you get reported. Until you get reported. They don't do random audits usually, but you either get reported by another patient, by another patient. You get reported by a patient. You get reported by another physician. Or you get reported by your employer, an insurance group, and so on. So those are the main entities that report you. So why would a patient report you? You know, Dr. Shorty was an asshole. He didn't listen to me. He was dismissive. He was snarky, which I could believe. <laughs> and um, he, uh, you know, he delayed my diagnosis. He gave me medications too late. Do I have any in my teeth? No, they're just yellow. Um, so now they're upset. They go to the state medical board and they file a complaint. Now, quite honestly, most state medical boards are going to be like, uh, you know, I, we understand that you're upset, but it doesn't sound like there was anything major here, maybe you could talk to him directly yourself or, you know, talk to his employer or whatever. Sometimes the patient will say, you know, I went in and I requested a particular medication for a particular treatment, which I think was indicated and Dr. Ashori denied it. And because of that, I ended up in the hospital. This is a big deal. There, they might, maybe the state medical board might send me a letter says we got this official patient complaint due to a bad outcome. Uh, and then I might, you know, so uh, what, what will happen, which is really difficult, you might just get a letter in the mail. So you may not even know it. The letter is going to go to the business address, whatever you list it, which most of us don't update, which is also against state medical board regulations. If you don't update your state, your address every 30 days, if you move, if you make a change, you're in trouble. They can, just for that, they can say, we will uh, write you a, a public letter of reprimand. We will punish you. We will do whatever they, they can do a lot. And that's the other thing. The state medical board can do whatever they want. There is no oversight. It's not that you're innocent until proven guilty. The state medical board can say, we just don't like you, Dr. Rishor. You have bad breath, you're ugly, you're bald, and you know your patients don't like you. We're just going to take your license away. I'm sorry. Well, fuck you. I'm going to sue you. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead and sue us. I sue them. I go to court, administrative law judge, everything. The judge says, absolutely, I don't think Dr. Rishor should lose his state medical license. The medical board can say, thank you. Mrs. Administrative Law Judge, we reviewed your recommendation, but we had our internal committee also review this, and we don't want to do it. Okay, now I, as Dr. Ashori, can take it up a notch. I can go to the circuit courts, I can go to the, uh, whatever their next, to the state <clears throat> something court, and then I can even take it to the federal court. So I have all these options. Chances are, it's going to be quite unlikely that I'm going to be able to do that. It's a very expensive proposition, and it's very timely, it's very, it's very, it could take a long time, you know, so maybe you will, maybe you won't. I haven't heard of any such cases that have been successful. Um, maybe some, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so that, that, that is the jurisdiction of the state medical board to determine who can and can't. Now, another state might give you, might grant you that license if one particular state is being just ridiculous. So the... It may, never, may, may never have been a lawsuit, right? So remember, we're just talking about a patient who's complaining about you. They may not even want to sue you. So you just get a letter. You just get a letter in this, in your little mailbox at, at work, you, which you may never check or nobody ever checks because nobody fucking writes letters anymore, guys. <laughs> but anyway, so they send you this letter. You don't reply back to it. Maybe they'll send you an email. Maybe they'll call you. Maybe not. Probably not. But if they do, they call you and it's like, hey, this is, this is uh, you know, Michael with... Uh, the, uh, I don't know, sh uh, Texas State Medical Board. And we have a patient complaint here and I wanna ask you some questions. And you're like, who the fuck? You're like, I'm not comfortable answering any questions about a patient because I can't verify who you are. 
uh, I don't understand. Uh, this is the, I just told you, this is Michael with the State Medical Board, and uh, I need you to answer these questions. Best thing to do then is to say, Michael, thank you. Thank you for reaching out to me. Remember, they are the people with the guns. They hold your license in a very flimsy little bag, and they can drop it any time, and you're fucked. So be respectful. Be nice, which I wasn't. That's why I got a 30-day license suspension, probably. I don't know, maybe for other reasons, but... You want to be respectful and you can just say like, is it okay if I talk to my, could you send me this request that you have in a letter? Could I, would it be all right if I talk to my attorney? If they say, no, you can't talk to your attorney, you can say, oh, um, is there a reason why I can't talk to my attorney before answering questions? Would you have anything to hide? I don't have anything to hide, but my attorney said I should always talk to them before talking to any investigators and I don't want to, since that's my attorney. So you have an attorney. Uh, yeah, every physician does, no? You can just play dumb. You can just say, yeah, I do. And if you don't want to lie, just know an attorney, you know? And say, if it's all right, I just want to talk to them. Now, most of the time, I don't think most uh, investigators are going to be that rude. Some will, especially if, they, if you did something kind of atrocious, egregious, not atrocious. <clears throat> but you can say, I'm, I'm just going to talk to someone. So I, I, anyway, I'm getting into the weeds here, but remember that the state medical board can investigate you for something like that um, if the patient complains. Your coworker might report you, one of your nurses might report you, uh, your ex-wife, ex-husband, ex-boyfriend might report you, um, a competitor, a dermatologist competitor might say, hey, Dr. Shore is doing some shady shit in his practice. They'll throw you under the bus. Uh, even if you're not doing shady shit, you might go, you might be investigated. And that's the first step, is to get an attorney to deal with this investigation. And all, the kind of attorney you find, when to get the attorney, when to talk to the attorney, how much to talk to the attorney, when you need to email the attorney, all of that is absolutely nuanced and is a case-by-case -case basis, which I'm not going to get into right now. So if you're, an insurance company can report you for overbilling, Medicare can report you, all of that is a possibility. So the reason I want to talk about how the state medical board has jurisdiction, the reason I want to talk about it is because the common things that you might get into trouble for is you might have a patient who crosses state lines. You have a patient who goes from one state to another and it's an emergency. They need a refill of their medication. They call you and they say, can you send the prescription into this pharmacy? I'm right, I'm right here across the state border or I'm you know, all the way across the country. You might not think anything of it and you might prescribe it. Now you think, oh, I know better. <laughs> I would never do that. Oh, there are so many physicians who do it. Why? Because they're like, this is my patient. They need their medication. <laughs> Why the hell would I not prescribe it to them? In fact, a patient who is in Texas while you are in Florida and they are originally a Florida patient and you are located in Florida and you don't have a state medical license in Texas might call you and ask you about a particular condition that happened to them. You run over the symptoms, you discuss it with them, and you're like, all right, I think we're, we're okay, we can wait it out, I'm going to have you come back and see me when you come see me. You engage in a patient-doctor relationship while the patient was in, in Texas. Now, if that patient ends up in the ER in Texas, and they say that I spoke to my doctor who said it's okay for me to wait, something could happen. The physician, the ER physician, some ins the, in the insurance company, somebody could report you to the state medical board, of course, the pharmacist can report you to the state medical board, to your own state medical board. So you become, you get into trouble with your Texas, what is it, Texas, Florida, whichever one I, I talked about, whichever one you actually live. So you get trouble with Texas. And then Florida will also investigate you because you prescribed a medicine to a patient in Florida or you gave them advice while they were across state lines. So that's when it becomes complicated. Other times when you get a malpractice suit and you apply for a renewal, they're going to ask you, did you get sued in the meantime? Well, you may have to report the contents of that suit and what the suit was about, whether you settled, whether it was an actual suit or not. All of that has to be reported to the state medical board. That can sometimes open up an independent investigation by the state medical board. Most of the time, malpractice suits, most of us are going to get sued. I haven't gotten sued yet. I'm sure it's just a matter of time, unfortunately. Uh, some, many physicians get sued more than once. And when we do get sued, we do have to report it to the state medical board. The reason I think it's important to understand what a state medical board is or isn't is because many of us have mm, gotten accustomed to dealing with the police. So we know how the police works. We know the jurisdiction they have. And we know the power that they have. But we also have learned that 
Well, if the police knocks on my door and they want to come in, I can say, actually, do you have a search warrant? No, I don't. Do you have a probable cause to enter my house? Mm, well, yeah, I think something's going on. If you feel like there is something imminently going on and you think you need to enter my house and I can't be in your way, then I won't. But if I don't have to, I would like you to not enter my house until you have a, um, a search warrant. And then the cop might say, do you have anything to hide? Mm, I don't have anything to hide, but that is what my attorney told me. Right? Those are the things that everybody is taught, especially if you're brown or if you're darker skinned. They, they tell you these are the things to say to protect yourself against not an ill-minded uh, cop, but because cops look for bad stuff. And if they enter your house and they see something bad, they're going to escalate it, right? So um, it's just to stay out of danger. But we, we're not used to, we're not accustomed to dealing with the same thing when it comes to a medical board investigator, when we deal with a medical board, one of the medical board uh, members who calls us. We don't know how to deal with that. What is their jurisdiction? What can they do? What can't they do, right? What happened to HIPAA, right? I had the uh, board investigator call me when I was in another country asking me about a patient that I had seen in Oregon. And I'm like, I'm not gonna talk to you over the phone about another patient while I, I was in Amsterdam at the time, while I am in Netherlands. Like, I'm just not gonna do that. Are you kidding me? Like, uh, I don't know who you are. Like, I don't, like, I don't think you have any jurisdiction. You, you have no right to ask me a, a question about a patient. Like, that, that doesn't work that way. I, I, I assumed I would have to first have an attorney do that and I don't know. Anyway, I was wrong. The, the, the investigator could ask me that question. They could ask me any question they want. They could have done whatever they wanted. But I would, if I had known better, I would have said, hey, thank you for contacting me. Absolutely, I will get you that information. However, I do need to talk to my attorney. I do need to review the chart. I do need to know what's going on. And if, they, if I got any pushback about whether I'm hiding something or I'm trying to delay the case, I would have said, absolutely not. Um, if, if, if you feel it's absolutely urgent, I can get on a phone call with an attorney right now. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but otherwise, would it be possible for me to get back to you in a week, in a few days? You know, What's the situation here? And I think most of the time, a medical board investigator, if you speak to them like that, like professionally and respectfully, they're going to be like, all right, this guy obviously doesn't have anything to hide. He's just being professional. He's just trying to make sure he's protecting his own ass. They would leave you alone. I didn't. I was the opposite. I was a dick. I was pushy. I was like, hell no. I'm not saying I regret any of that because I have my own reasons, but uh, maybe, maybe I regret it. I don't know. I, I, all these years that I've thought about it since 2017, I feel like I did everything appropriate. And based on the knowledge that I had, I reacted the way I reacted. But... Obviously, that got me into a lot of trouble. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much everything I'm going to say about state medical board investigation, what can happen. Many physicians will dismiss a letter that's sent to them by the state medical board. That is probably one of the most common things where things get escalated. In fact, it happened to me as well. I never knew. They were sending letters to Kaiser. I was like, I left Kaiser a long time ago, my friend. <laughs> like, I, I don't know why you were sending it there. They're like, well, because you didn't update your address. I'm like, my home address was there. Why don't you send it to my home? You know? And they're like, well, we don't send it to your home. We send it to your business. Oh, why don't you call me? Because you're calling me right now. Why don't you call me in those three months? A lot of little stuff like that. A lot of little stuff like that. And so if you know what their jurisdiction is and you know what your rights are, a lot of these things can be avoided. But again, kind of the state medical board thing, I think that's a big one. A lot of us miss it. A lot of us don't understand it. Um, and I hope this is helpful. I hope this is helpful for any physician who is dealing with the state medical board, dealing with any attorney that calls you, dealing with anybody who's opening an investigation regarding you and another patient. The most important thing is be kind, be respectful because you don't know what their power is. And then ask, ask if you can just get some time to talk to an attorney. Is it all right if I just talk to an attorney? And then you can reach out. You can find physicians, uh, attorneys, sorry. You can find attorneys who deal with medical board investigation, who protect, who represent physicians before the state medical board. These are administrative, um, like healthcare administration. Most large law firms are going to have at least one or two physicians like this. If you don't know where to find one, you can call your professional society. So if you're part of, I don't know, California Psychiatry Association, uh, or you're part of some rheumatology group, or you can um, post on your Facebook group if you guys have that and ask some physicians who might be married to an attorney who might represent physicians. That's a, that's a good way. And then just get a word of mouth, honestly. And take your case and talk to the attorney presented and they will off they're very good about that. They know what to say, what not to say, what can be asked, what can't be asked. They will save you a lot of headache. Um, 
And I'll save this for another time, but I do think there is a lot to be said about how much pushback you give to the state medical board and how lenient you are. And they can, they can bulldoze you if you're not willing to fight. And they can push back quite, quite hard if you fight them uh, improperly. So I think that's kind of important uh, to understand as well. And that's, that's all quite nuanced. And remember, many attorneys are just probably going to be mostly interested in uh, billing you hourly. I'm not saying that they're evil, but they are billing you hourly. Your es- eventual outcome is not that important to them. It is most important to you but it is not quite as important to them because they're going to bill you hourly regardless of the outcome, if that makes sense. Um, That's always the nature, right? I mean, they're busy with so many other cases and they're dealing with some really complicated cases. So if you come to them, you know. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, email me, drmo at digitalnomadphysician.com. If you need to consult with me, digitalnomadphysician.com. Go to the top right, click on consult and book a session with me. Take care.